What is your name? I'm Ameya Rajarashi. What are you doing now? Yeah, so uh, now I was just uh, reading a poem, mm. a poetry. Mm. It's named uh, I Hear America Singing. Oh, you, I Hear America Singing? Yeah, written by Walt Whitman. Oh, Walt Whitman. Uh, he's a poet, philo a philosopher poet, I suppose. Okay. All right. Of course, most of the poets are philosophers. Because poets uh, see beyond the available. Poetry is always about uh, 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 pointing out, interpreting, analyzing the linkages of the visibles, the visible realities, the visible uh, items, uh, even objects or events or episodes or people or phenomena. That's poetry. Even we can say simple lyrics also sometimes touch. Uh, philosophy. Most of the film songs uh, 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 or what you call, what is that songs that come in uh, what you call like uh, Michael Jackson, Bob Dylan and all that. They also touch uh, uh, poetic levels. In fact in India uh, the Tamil lyric writer Vairamuthu, he often touches uh, uh, very unique spirituality level. Okay, like there is a famous, uh, a lot of his lyrics are touching, bordering between philosophy and the real spirituality. There is a normal Dappanguth song, uh, sort of, that is Kumbida Pona Devam Kurke Vandadamma. That is, uh, uh, the, 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 the deity you have gone to meet are going to worship in the temple has come across you and Kurke Vanda Devam Kude Adhamma and that deity which has come across you uh, is almost dancing along with you. All right, so Walt Whitman is a philosophic poet, all poets are philosophic because of the reasons I suggested. And when as a student, when you approach a poem, you must uh, first understand a little bit of the poet also. So read out about Walt Whitman. <coughs> read out clearly so that it is recorded. Yeah. Walt Whitman was born at West Hills near New York and grew up in Brooklyn. Which year? Is he alive now? Or? Yes. He was born in 1819 and died in 1992. Oh, he died in 1992? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So his formal education ended when he was 11. Yeah, that's very beautiful. His formal education, that means uh, going to schools and colleges, what? He ended. Ended, when ended he was in? 11. At the age 11. Yeah. Uh, that's very beautiful. As a creativity researcher for decades, I have realized, I have seen very clearly that almost all creative people, especially in the field of art, literature, poetry, uh, theatre, painting, uh, and so on, they all <coughs> did not have much of so-called schooling. You know, the great poems are written not by PhDs or postdoctoral researchers in literature. That also shows the, the weakness of education system. Education is only to make uh, Employees for the systems of the world to work in the government offices, to work in the organizations, to work in the businesses. Okay. So, so they have just designed a, a system where people get some general awareness, people learn some subjects, or there is chemistry. So, expecting people to work in the chemi chemical labs and the drug companies. People have physics to uh, select some of the good ones to work in the uh, uh, various uh, uh, design laboratories, equipment laboratories. Okay, people go for engineering so that uh, the system can select the best engineers to work in the factories that make uh, machines and uh, uh, automobiles or whatever it is. That's okay. 
but uh, the government should not be insisting everybody to be educated in all the subjects but they have to do it because they do not know which one of the millions of people who go to school will come out as uh, so called good learners so let it be but uh, at least at the primary school level they have to incorporate a little bit of uh, uh, philosophies little bit of psychology little bit of sociology little bit of ethics little bit of uh, uh, ideas about existence and the world about life about personality about values about attitudes and so on and so forth <coughs> which the governments do not do which the education policy makers do not do all over the world that's why there is no uh, real evolution of life there is no peace there is no happiness for humanity increasingly there is no happiness in humanity a recent newspaper report shows that the the the, the largest uh, largest kind of uh, what you call problem in the sense of uh, population being affected is simply depression depression in india too okay despite uh, having money despite having smartphones and laptops and motorbikes and cars and uh, uh, restaurants and the food and uh, airplane travel and good dresses and uh, all kinds of things depression is increasing every day what education when the, when the, the children are not trained to manage their mind and manage their life okay we cannot respect uh, the governments because the governments comprises normal people there is a lot of expectation in the population that the governments comprise some extraordinary magical human beings no their thought processes are so limited and blocked they are not creative actually speaking creative people never get into governments so it is the responsibility of every student of course the little students are immature so it is the responsibility of the parents to have a have a home tutor if they do not have time or to ask them to read and understand uh, uh, some some literature some books some uh, philosophies about life a little bit of psychology of managing the mind and self uh, to educate them about values character and uh, personality okay okay all right so uh, what i mean to say is that uh, the entire world even you are doing your final year degree english literature you see the paradox you see the paradox you have a doctorate having phd in english literature teaching you poems okay and that poem is written by a guy who has stopped his learning at the age of 11 don't they wonder don't this uh, stupid people in the education system uh, in the whole world uh, why don't they open their eyes and see the truth that the so called creative people did not have in education not only in the field of literature take their own field of money making okay profit making companies what they are doing their machines and equipments and the energy systems have been created or discovered by people who have never been to school simple general creative human beings and 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 so called leaders of the world they are creating agony of the humanity by having wars uh, using the technologies created by simple creative people Who were not educated much? Who were very simple and gentle? I don't know what you are going to read about Walt Whitman. I am sure, as a creativity researcher, I am sure that there are further lines. I am not a teacher either. I am not an English teacher. I am just doing this as a part of making you look at a poem from a creative analytical point of view. 
So now I also realize that the school books contain good choices of poems and essays. I have seen in Mandra Rishika's book, in class 6, there are lessons on Buddha. But the stupid teachers, teachers who do not have any commitment to the development of the children, they just teach the language of this lesson. So, this education system is the greatest, uh, the, this current education system is the greatest evil of humanity, actually speaking. The only advantage is that they create some so called uh, uh, workers in the companies and the organizations and the governments. Education is, universal education is meaningless by the very fact that uh, all education system have been created for employment and there is no employment for all the educated people, so-called schooled people, so-called people with the degrees and postgraduate degrees and all that, they do not have a job according to their learning. Then why the hell this is continued? What creativity on the part of the stupid governments to continue this drama? Why don't they, why don't they openly tell the world that uh, uh, when they invite the students to learn that everybody may not get a job because of your learning. They have to say that. Like a disclaimer in advertisements, you know, mm -hmm. that uh, completing a job, uh, sorry, education degree does not guarantee, does not ensure in any way that you will get a job. All right. And, they, and when there is an education system, they have to also introduce real uh, subjects. There are so much of philosophies and uh, perspectives and theories about life, about mind, about uh, living, about values, about attitudes, about ethics, about character. Why they are all kept apart from schooling system, Amaya Rajarishi? Why only some subjects, some subject matters to make coolies? Okay, this much also you have to think. All right? Okay. Yeah. Come on. Quickly so, read about the Walt Whitman. He earned his living as a, as a clerk, printer, teacher, and journalist. Hmm. He loved the busy streets of New York and visited the South and the West in 1848. Soon after this, he started writing Leaves of Grass, a sequence of poems celebrating America. Yeah, that's enough. Okay. Now go to the poem. Read it clearly because this is being recorded. I hear America singing. That's the title of the poem. Yeah. You say that. The, the title, title of the poem. poem is... The title of the poem, I Hear America Singing. I Hear America Singing is the title of the poem. So when you read a poem, you have to read it differently from reading a prose. Because the poem is already about the invisible hidden linkages of a reality, of an observable thing. Or it could be an interpretation of a poetic mind, I mean a creative mind, a creative analytical mind about things that are normally noticed by the majority of people. So you have to read poetry with, a, with, a, with a, some unique stress on the critical words, with a little pause, little slow. <coughs> read, the purpose of reading the poetry is not to convey the language. The, you have to differentiate between the language that you read and the meaning and the implications or the connotations or the denotations you convey through the particular configuration of words. It is not normal syntax. Understand that? <coughs> okay. I, am, I hear America singing. The varied carols I hear. Those of mechanics, so see, he is uh, talking about the singing of the America. Yeah, now, what, is, what is America? That is the people of America, I mean, the general people. They are not singers like uh, uh, so called, uh, what you call, Michael Jackson or <laughs> whatever singers, I don't know. 
he is talking about the sea he uses the word singing mm. but uh, we also read the first uh, stanza uh, first two lines it is not the normal song here is that poetic uh, interpretation of singing this is not the way you uh, normal people understand singing okay come on what is the singing the very the carol say here carol i don't know what is the exact meaning of carol i have heard of christmas carol okay what is the meaning of the carol yeah it is here joyful songs who scores those of mechanics <clears throat> okay you know what is a mechanic who is uh, identifying or diagnosing the problems of an equipment or a machine and repairing it or some mechanics i suppose who repair the uh, um, factories i mean the machines in the factories the industrial machines you know <clears throat> each one singing his as it should be blithe and strong so it should be blithe and strong the carpenter singing his his song written as he measures his plank of plank or beam so he has to make a measurement of the plank of wood the mason singing his as he makes ready for work or leaves off work the boatman singing what belongs to him in his boat the duck and singing on the steamboat duck the shoemaker singing as he sits on his bench the hatter singing as he stands the woodcutter's song the plowboy's son on his way in the morning or at noon intermission or at sundown the delicious singing of the mother or of the young wife at work or of the girl sewing or washing each singing what belongs to him each singing what belongs to him Not till now uh, uh, it is a very simple plain poem also mm. <clears throat> because uh, of course he is uh, the poet is pointing out uh, the unique singing because there is something good about singing something special about singing because in general singing is like a singing carol it is blithe and strong you need certain power to string you have to sing you have to exert a little extra pressure on your lungs to sing a lot of people cannot really sing a normal song because they do not know how to exert pressure on the lungs also according to the requirement of the pitch and you know yeah. okay. so anyway he is just giving examples of mechanics carpenters mason uh, boatman uh, the duck hand the shoemaker uh, the hatter the woodcutter the plowboy uh, the, the the mother the young wife or the girl sewing or washing okay yeah. he, she, uh, he has just taken a uh, a sample a kind of a, a sample you have to actually investigate why he has chosen this sample there could be many other workers also all right very interestingly ah he has uh, he has talked about the plowboy he has not uh, talked about the farmers that's okay there is a word plowboy mm-hmm. all right now he is coming into a little bit of philosophy each singing what belongs to him or her and to none else there is something he has noticed each singing what belongs to him or her and to none else you see but uh, that is little different from the example because uh, uh, for example there is a little bit of a paradox i see oh come here that is the each singing what belongs to him you no know, he is talking about the singing of the mechanics of the carpenter the mason the boatman the shoemaker the woodcutter the mother the girl and the plowboy 
though they are doing their jobs which are for others okay but uh, he is not talking about what kind of songs they are singing the contents of the songs all right hmm? so even though the mechanic is singing though the work of the mechanic is 100% for the other people his songs are about what belongs to him that he is not talking in other words he is uh, uh, telling the people that even when you do a work for the others well, of course all your work are for the others Yeah. Nothing very really special about it. And their universe, and their plants and birds, they are all working for others also. In fact, perhaps it is human beings who do not really work for others. Even when they work for others, their eyes, their attention is on how much they get. Okay, your arms are given, your mind is given, your intellect is given, your, your competences are there with you in order to work for the others. If you are alone in the world, what others, you just work for getting the food for you also. Now, a lot of people are working, actually it is for others. It is for the other systems, which is for building up a society or building up a nation. But how many of the so-called educated people are dedicated to work for the others with a clear attitude and value system about their work for others? These are all questions you can think about in this context. Okay? Each singing what belongs to him or her and to none else. The day, what belongs to the day. So, the day, what belongs to the day, meaning, the, you said the day singing what belongs to the day, or the day It's is 8:30. getting uh, the things which belongs to the day that is being worked out by the Svesans and Carpenters. At night, the party of young fellows, robust and friendly, singing with open mouths their strong, melodious songs. So, uh, Walt Whitman uh, uh, is a philosopher, but uh, uh, so, see, uh, uh, later he has written that he Uh, had a good appreciation for another real philosopher called Ra- Ralph Waldo Emerson, whom Whitman admired. Okay? Yeah. Um, so, uh, Whitman also shared Emerson's belief in the self-sufficiency of the individual. So, so this was something about self-sufficiency of the individual also. Because uh, though he is working for the other people, he is singing the song of his choice that we have seen here also when they are working, especially those who are working in the field and building construction and all that. They are singing normally, let's say, a film song or something like that. It has no connection to the work. So, the interpreter says that, you know, he said, the poet succeeds in conveying his ideal of the true spirit of America through a series of images that extol the sovereign dignity of the common man and woman. So, uh, nothing special about this uh, poem, I say. Okay, it's a very simple poem. <coughs> simple reporting of uh, uh, perhaps a uh, normally known noticed people may not i don't think notice that uh, the so called workers are singing also when they work in fact in ancient india especially in ancient uh, uh, south uh, southern part of india okay which i have uh, when i was uh, discussing a poem with the mantra rishiga uh, it was about uh, the females working in the paddy field right when they are doing the work, a little bit laborious work of preparing, plowing the land and uh, what you call it, cutting, the, ripping the uh, paddy, they were all singing. There were so many songs available already. Uh, 
Uh, there is a special name for that song, that category of song, right? Yeah. There is a special name for that category of song in Kerala state, which is Koitubat. Koit meaning reaping the um, rice. So, uh, so they sing a Koitubat. Collectively, all of them sing and uh, reap the um, uh, plants. So, that uh, 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 that was an established tradition, so so many Koitwars and uh, such group songs were available. So, here uh, they were just talking about uh, uh, American individuality. Let us say, everyone is singing his or her song. <laughs> and that's very interesting. Whereas, uh, in uh, so that shows the so relative uh, differential identity of people. The mason is singing his song, the carpenter is singing his song, the plowboy is singing his song, whereas uh, uh, in the context of working people singing in India, I mean South, South India as far as I know, especially in Kerala state, uh, the songs were collective songs. So there was a kind of a unity among people. All of them sang the same song. Am I right, Mantra Rishiga? Yeah. So uh, now, so that's what uh, the introduction about the poet also says. The so-called the sovereign dignity of every individual. Every individual uh, had the freedom to sing his or her songs when he was doing. But here, uh, the point is that everybody is working more or less independently. Yeah. So, a mechanic working, he cannot sing a group song. <laughs> All right. So, uh, whereas uh, uh, there could be songs of the people who work in the field also. Okay, this is a very simple poem. Unlike the other poem which we discussed yesterday by uh, whom? E. E. Cummings. Ah, e. e. Cummings. In the same test book. Yeah. So, that's a... Uh, much more a poem of a different orbit. We are not belittling this poem, but uh, poems also can belong to what I call a normal distribution. Okay? You know the normal distribution theory. Yeah. Some of the poems are simple, but that does not mean that uh, such a simple poem is not a poem. Keeping the basic uh, uh, exp uh, basic, uh, basic details of the uh, setting and structure of uh, poetic uh, thinking, you can talk even about a simple thing. You can have a poem about an ant moving through the floor. Why not? But say something differently, but point out some difference. That's why you need poetry. You know? An ant is walking, moving through that brick. It's just a reporting of reality. But when you say that ant is now moving through a man-made brick which was shaped out of the earth and what you call roasted in the uh, kill and the uh, and the ant is getting a taste of how to enter the house even at the time of uh, it being built and so those kind of things are possible okay wish you all the best uh, my rajarshi i want uh, at least all the literature teachers in the world who teach literature as an opportunity to convey the uh, difference of creative people and also uh, take uh, five to ten minutes to make the students uh, understand the implications of existence. Do they do that? Did your teacher do that? Uh, yes, she did. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> she did. She gives some. Uh, she does give her own interpretation mm -hmm. than most of the teachers will. She's. Yeah, I am not talking about her yeah. own interpretation. That everybody does. Yeah, but it is. Did it create a perception in you about having your song when you work? Yeah, it does. Huh? It did. It did. did she really tell you that you should have your song when you work? Uh, I don't know. That is the, perhaps the most direct and most critical message in this. You should have a song in your mouth when you work. If you look at those uh, sample people given, they're all, most of them are doing a hard work. 
they are not so called educated class with uh, doctoral degrees and phds and uh, working as uh, so called white collar workers Perhaps the so-called edu- highly educated white-collar workers, the rulers and the clerics and the business traders, they may not have a song in their mouth. They don't have their own songs in their mouth, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. Mostly we also observed, because we are living in a village here, that most of the village people do have a, a very pleasing and happy attitude and songs. You know how much Rangan is singing. okay so that was the most important message of this poem actually that when you work you should have a song in your heart or in your mouth or you should actually be singing that's the message also okay she i appreciate that you 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 still feel that she told you something but you don't remember any of those messages right okay i will just ask the question if she does that if many teachers do that it is wonderful why but the english teachers should or language teachers should take it as a special responsibility okay they may be uh, very poetically um, what to call uh, delivering a lot of their understanding their command over the language their ability to interpret the poem but uh, they should reserve certain part to give a strong message a lasting and indelible and indelible impression in the minds of the students then only they are a great teacher i am not a teacher i am not a language teacher but i am sure what i told you right today will be remembered throughout your life am i right yeah yeah i know that <coughs> this is the minimum responsibility of every teacher in the world even if they are talking about physics and chemistry and engineering and medicine and the other subjects that's the only way to create a wonderful world the so called religion and the so called governments so called business will not do that the governments and the and system they are actually cheating every new generation of wonderful human beings they are not giving the best they are not giving they are not giving any training to the mind and the intellect and the uh, spirit of the new generation of human beings instead they are simply dealing with the making them workers for the economy let them do that of course survival is important if just to be born in this world and eat food and die what is the need of this what is the speciality of human beings the so called human being look derogatory they despise the animal kingdom every animal as i told you every cat is a cat is a cat every animal is living a wonderful life of its own existence but the so called educated big human beings they just don't see the beauty of the animals and they use uh, animal whenever they compare with the criminal and unethical people criminals and unethical and uh, injurious anti social intimidating entities are only among the human beings evidence every day everywhere in every part of the world since the beginning of history they have no right to make a comment on the animals a great majority of human beings are nowhere near any of the animals in the world in in competences what over an animal is capable of they are firmly and correctly and elegantly and completely capable of doing what they what they are designed to do no animal is unethical no animal is criminal no animal is manipulating and what this education has been doing to the world look at the world today so i am preparing you as a as a mystic leader of the future by telling you all these things 
Rather, whether you become a mystic leader or not, uh, I cannot insist you. But you have all the rights to become a mystic. Mystic meaning nothing great. So called, don't worry about the images of the mystic created by the idiotic majority. I'm talking about the word mystic to mean to the capability to understand the truth of things, the truth of entities and phenomena, the truth behind the manifest reality itself. What are going on? Okay, all right. And a poem is an evidence of uh, mystic. Every poet is a mystic. They see that level of truth. They see a little bit of truth running behind that. In this simple poem, uh, the mechanic and the plowboy and the, and the carpenter and the boatman and uh, they are all uh, singing their own songs when they are working. So, in general, I would say the critical message of that poem uh, is this, I say, rather I dare to say, that the, the central most message of this poem by Walt Whitman is that everybody should have his or her own song. And in order to have his or her own song, one needs to have a certain peace of mind, a certain attitude to self, a certain confidence in self, and preferably the creativity to create one's own song. Got it? All right. Thank you. All right. <clears throat>